Okay guys, how are you doing today? So in today's video, I just quickly want to get to it. We're going to be looking at how to work with displacement mapping Redshift on Cinema 4D. So um, been, I've been having questions from people and particularly my friends here that I should show how to use the displacement mapping Redshift in Cinema 4D. So I tried several times and then I noticed that it's just one um, tag that I need to let it come up. So let's just check how to do that. So over here in um, Cinema 4D, I already have a scene. So let me just bring up the camera that I'm going to be looking for. If you look at the scene, nothing really. I just work with a landscape object that I pushed up and with a pull, pull sculpting tool. So that's just what I have here. And also I have a dome light, which I've used to lit the whole thing. So I'm just going to quickly set up um, rest shifts and just make this GI brute fox and brute fox. So that, that's just pretty much everything I want to do here. Okay, so I'm going to close this and go back to the camera. Then for me to set up, I have to create... Um, okay, so let's just quickly see what this is giving us. So I'm going to make this um, 600 and the reason I'm doing this is just for speed purpose. And so if I fire up this, I'm going to get, oh sorry, this was one of my test friends for my wife. So, so I'm going to start up this. So this is what I get to have. So right now I would want to up this um, dome light exposure. So let's try to and see what we have. So you notice this looks so off, so dry, nothing really um, to this. So we can just quickly create a redshift material and add that material on this landscape. And I'm going to quickly have a reflected object right there. So I can just, so everything looks so reflective. And that is pretty much what you get to have. And you are seeing the light interaction with this. So how I'm going to go about this is, if I open this material, I can just bring this over here. Okay, so let me just bring this over here. So I have that. So I can just have everything while working. So I'm seeing the feedback. All right, so I can bring this here. So the first thing I'm going to do is to bring up my rock texture. So, so my, just to work with the displacement. So I'm going to come here, type texture and drag this out. So under the texture, I will come to the general tab of the texture, just click here and take me to my texture tab. So by the way, the texture I'm going to be using, I'm, I'm going to put link in the description. I, I brought out this texture from texture saving. They are also the creator of H HDRI even. So I'm going to use this um, material. So the material has um, the diffuse, displacement, normal, roughness, and all that. So I'm not going to make use of the normal. I just want to work with the displacement. So you see, because I, I'm still going to put normal. So you see the difference between that and the displacement. So if I bring up the diffuse, I bring this up. So we can just right click on this and rename. So this becomes the diffuse so that we know that this is the diffuse so let me just bring all the textures that i need so i'm going to control and drag this i don't have to be going back and forth and then so I just click this so this is going to be for the displacement and right click and rename placement sorry about that then bring this control and drag this down and go back here. So I'm going to be needing the roughness. Then control drag. I'm also going to need um, normal. All right, so that's, so this is the normal. So I'll right click here, rename. So I can, so this is meant to be the roughness. So I'm going to rename. 
roughness. So we have that. So we can bring this out here. Okay, so if we drag this um, diffuse into the RS material and put it in a diffuse color, then this is what we're going to have. So you, you quickly see this. So if it's not firing up fast, you can just refresh and that will refresh that. So let's just quickly wait for it to come up. So you have this. So for now, we can just quickly turn off the reflection so we can see a better representation of this texture here. If you notice the texture is um, quite too large for this, so what we can do is to come over to the texture and reduce the scale. So the way the scale for um, redshift texture works is that um, the higher the value, the smaller they become, the lower the value, the larger they become. So I'm going to increase this texture. So let's say three by three, then it's going to reduce the scale of this. So if you just if you want to reduce the representation, you just need to increase this value. Then it's going to reduce. Okay. So let's wait for this to come up. So we need to refresh. Really um, pushing the system so hard. So. So this is what I get to have. All right, so maybe I could go away with um, Let's try four. If it's fine, if not, we'll bring it back. So this is four. You can think I'll just, I'll be stopping this and refreshing. So this is that. Then I can bring back the, the, the reflection. So just bring the reflection back to one. All right, so this is going to be very reflective now. All right, so that is not what we want. So that is where this comes in handy, the roughness. So if you bring the roughness and drag over here, under the reflection, you see the roughness weight, uh, sorry, the reflection roughness. As soon as you plug that in and fire up, you start seeing some parts of it being reflective. And so this is um, um, not really bad. This is not bad. We are actually having a good representation, but right now we're not seeing any um, displacement right on here. So before now, what I would do is to come here and put in a bomb map. And the good thing with the bomb map is that you can use it as a height map and also as normal. So we can just change that to normal space and drag this over to this place, texture input and click here and drag it over to the overall and bump input. So as soon as you do that, it's going to quickly calculate a little bit and then it should come up now. So let's wait for this to, so, okay. All right, so we have that. The bump also has scale. So the scale is more like the height value. So if I fire up this, you're going to see the bump. But this is more like faking displacement. So you don't get to have interaction of um, light with this. This is just, this is okay for an object that is very far away that you don't really need to have the detail. But by the time you want to start adding um, detail and all that, you want to have interaction of light then, you need to work with your displacement. So let's try, um, let's see three. I want it to be very bright. I think four is overkill. So I think I will just work with the three value. So I'm going to bring this up so you can already see what we are having. So back then I will just work with the displacement, sorry, with normal and just be done with that. And that's just it. But then I realized that, okay, when you work with your displacements, you see a better representation of the texture you've gotten and also very important you have the interaction of light so wherever you have that has a height it's cast shadows and all that so that is what this is actually missing here so right now this is meant to cast some shadow here but we, we're not really seeing that so that's where this comes in handy so if i type displacement you have a displacement and a displacement blend blender. This is used to blend two or more displacements together. So I'll just bring the displacement. Then I'll drag this over to this displacement texture. So as soon as I do that, you would want to bring this over here, but you will not find any displacement here. So 
instead of you bringing it over to your RS material, the displacement is taken to the output. So you go to the output to see your displacement over there. And that is where you find your displacement. But the thing with this displacement is notice we are not seeing any actual displacements. If I get rid, okay, let me just quickly do this and do a snapshot so you see what I'm talking about. Okay, so we have, um, I think I, I should just bring this out on dock so we can. So if I do a snapshot right here, that's with the displacement. It's going to add this snapshot here. Then if I get rid of the displacement and re render and do another snapshot, you would see that you don't get to have difference. Can you see I'm clicking, I'm cycling between these two. No difference here. So even though we've added displacement on this snapshot zero, it's not different from snapshot one after removing the displacement. And the reason is because of one um, tag, which we need to add. So put everything here. So let me bring the displacement back. So everything we need to do here is actually done. We don't really need anything right here. So the next one we want to do is over on this geometry. So you right click on the geometry, you go to redshift tags, then you see your redshift object. So once you add that, you want to go over to the geometry. So if you go to the geometry, then what we want to add is this displacement. You need to activate that. So for you to activate, you have to click on override and come down to the displacement section and check that. So as soon as you check that, it's going to be making use of this maximum displacement value. So now what this override does is that it overrides any displacement that you've had there. So the normal displacement is one. So it's going to override that. So whatever value you put now here, that is what is going to be taken. So let's try and fire up with displacement of one. So you notice we don't really get to have high um, displacement, but, it, but by the time you start changing this, so if we make this 10 by 10, you notice this is pushing up a little bit. So let's try and bring this up more. So let's try 30 and also 30. You notice what we're having here. So this is now rising up. So if I do another snapshot right here and check the first and the second, notice this was when you added displacement, but we didn't come to change here. But now when we have that and this comes up, you see the difference. So let's now try and see the interaction with light. So if I go over and add a different light, so maybe an area light, so let's just go out of this camera. Bring the area light somewhere here just to rotate so that we should have a good um, shadow being cast here. So we can just bring this over here and move this. So normally you're supposed to have shadow being cast. All right, so here. So let's try and change this down. So let's try 50 and go back to this. So let's do another right now. So maybe for this dome light, we can just bring the dome light back. So maybe we try one and work with that 50. So if I fire up this, let's see what we get to have. So you can start seeing this. So maybe I will come to this light and increase this intensity. 50 was not that okay. So let's try 10, 100 rather. And for this dome light, if we make this 100%, we don't want to have that dome light. You can start seeing the interaction. So we can now from here. So let me just lock this camera to this redshift camera that we are on RS camera, which is this and lock. So the reason why I'm doing that is even if I go out of this camera, it still sees that. So from here, we can bring the lights, move it up and see the interaction right here. So you can see a better representation of this when you add your reflection or when you add your displacement. And this is really good. So you get, tend to have that information. So you can already see the better representation and having the 
this so let's try 120 make it large so you can start seeing this so coupled with your what's it called with your dome lights then you start filling in shadows so if you notice here everywhere you have this very blackish stuff so this doesn't really look realistic except you're trying to um, simulate a cave like um, render but since it's not a cave even for a cave you don't get to have this 100% zero so you need to fill in with some stuff so if you bring this up a little bit just to have some detail here then you can have this information so this is what I just quickly wanted to show you and I'll, I'll be talking more about redshift from now on an older um, rendering machine because if you notice if you notice I always work with physical render but then and that is for those who don't have this um, third party renderer so but then if you have the third party renderer some of us don't really know how to work with them so just some little tips on how to do them and that's what I'm going to be showing in the later video so if you feel this was helpful please do give me a thumbs up and a like and also you can also make a comment in the description below and tell me what you feel about this and what I'm not doing right so we can also learn and also if you are new to my channel please do subscribe because I do tutorials like this every time so once more do have a wonderful day and god bless you